Uh, good morning. I'm from Malaysia. My name is T. Boon Ping. You can call me T. Okay. Uh, basically, I today that the title that we are uh, we going to I'm going to present is a case study that we have done in in Malaysia using a, a, a fiber optic sensor. So uh, I'm actually coming from this company, Smart Sensing Technology. Uh, it's a company formed in the 2015. So probably now uh, we are the only one, I mean, in, in South Asia area that, I mean, is using this uh, 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 fiber optic sensor. There are some, I mean, they are using FBG in probably Singapore. Other than that, uh, I don't see much. So it's good to see that, I mean, a lot of people, I mean, the conference is using this, fully utilize this technology in all over the world. So uh, that the, some keyword of the case study that I'm going to present. So uh, basically it's a structure as assessment using those instrumentation. So we have a problem with old steel railway bridge more than 100 years in Malaysia. So we need to justify, I mean those, the railway bridge, those is still in use, how is the behavior? Whether is that safe or not? I mean using the sensor or FBG and BODDA. So this is the problem that we have. A steel uh, railway bridge for span, and it's more than 100 years. So this is some of that, how it look like for span. This is one of the span, the drawing. Uh, this is the section of one of the span. So we are having some problem here. So this particular bridge is involved in the whole long stretch of railway upgrading work. So the engineer, the structure engineer need to make a decision whether they can maintain this bridge or they need to build a new bridge. So every time when the train pass by this bridge, they have to slow down the, the train. And based on the visual inspection externally, Everything is still look fine, even after 100 years. So this is a decision that the structure engineer needed to make, whether to replace or not. But they don't have structure drawing. And we asked for the foundation. They say not sure. So immediate solution is that everyone would think of computer monitoring, numerical monitoring. That is the most straightforward and effective way, I would say, I mean, to, to, to justify whether, I mean, the bridge, whether is it structurally safe or not. But we have some problem here. So the material is over 100 years. Why is, it, why is the material property of the seal? But the engineer did end up cut some of the section, go for the lab test to look at why is the property of the seal. And then we have those that join at that Time during the construction, the technology is using those the build up section. They are not using hot roll section. So there's a lot of river joint. How effective of those uh, river joint after 100 years? So and then we have some existing slipper, which is timber slipper, which the condition doesn't look very fine. And then the more accurately, I'll say is some is actually missing. You can see that. So, uh, so because of that, even that the structure engineer did the modeling for the bridge, uh, they feel that, I mean, the bridge is safe. But with all those, the issue and the problem of those I mentioned, so even the client, the engineer is not confident on the modeling. How, how is that, I mean, physically uh, 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 represent, whether is that physically reliable, I mean, to represent the, that all those the existing condition. So that's why they call us in. So we start to put out some sensor. I mean, do the measurement, strain measurement on those the member, uh, uh, structural member, and then look at how is the deflection. And then also one of the objectives that after the whole project or the upgrading project, the train is supposed to run at 90 km per hour. So we need to make sure that we can capture those kind of data, I mean, to, to, to verify that, uh, to prove that those structural integrity 
is still all right. And then we did the load test using single locomotive, double locomotive, static load test, and then also dynamic load test. So just uh, for those who are not familiar with the sensor, just a very quick uh, introduction. We have those the typical sensor like a uh, point wise sensor. This is a uh, vibrating wire based sensor. This is very common in the market. Uh, but the problem with this sensor is that uh, it's not able to capture very fast measurement. So when we need to have those a uh, dynamic swing, it doesn't work. So we have this uh, quasi distributed sensor, FBG, which for now, the technology can go up to a very fast speed measurement. What we have with our company is that we can go up to 1,000, uh, 1,000 uh, measurement per second. And then also that uh, this is distributed uh, fiber optic sensor. What we have is VODDA and it can be uh, uh, other system also, I mean for the quick measurement. So I'll skip on this. So this is just some of the sen sensor, I mean the uh, uh, example of those uh, sensor. So we did a dynamic uh, load test with the train passing through the bridge and then we have the measurement at uh, 1000 Hz. Also we did the static load test on this particular span. The fourth span is the uh, uh, same dimension, so we decided to test one span, I mean to represent the old fourth span. So this is how it looked like with some of the arrangement of where we put the sensor. Plan view. This is where we test the bridge. <coughs> so we, even with instrumentation, with sensor, we need to put it at the right place. If we do it wrongly, it might give you something that is not really representative. And we have the problem with this build-up section. You can see that with all those the member uh, like this, you actually build up by a lot of different sections. And then it's supposed to behave uh, actually because this is a truss. But where should we put the sensor? So we did the calculation on, I mean, uh, those, where is the neutral assist? We try our best to put the sensor at that uh, location to do the measurement. And then we have those uh, 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 the measurement with the train at the different location and position and then with a different speed. So this is some of the photo for the installation, the sensor at those section. Uh, to get all these things to proceed, uh, the first procedure what we did is that uh, the structure engineer actually did the modeling they have some feeling on what is the result that is expected. So based on that result, we actually try to calibrate and uh, update that model to be uh, as close as the, the, the actual measurement. We did have some measurement of the displacement at the mid-span of the bridge. And then this is based on the uh, uh, a uh, uh, modeling theoretical, and then this is based on those the uh, displacement measurement from the sensor. So with that, we are quite confident that everything is still under control. So with that, we proceed with further tests, with the testing of a uh, 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 dynamic test on the bridge with different loading. Okay, this is one of the video that we capture. I mean, during the test. It's not very clear here. Actually, the train passed through the bridge at 10 km per hour, and it's not very clear. Actually, there's some reading here. The strain reading. So, this is some of the result. So it started, uh, this is the, ex I extract some of the result from uh, a few of the sensor. So this is how it looked like. This is at uh, a baseline strain when the train go into the bridge and then it come out from the bridge 
and then it come back to near zero and then with the event that the train actually moved very fast across the bridge it's only a few seconds so that's why it captured only a spike and then come out again go into the bridge again with a different speed then parking the train at the middle of the span of the bridge we want to look at what kind of train we are looking at and then also a few passing i mean across that bridge this is how it looked like so if we zoom out one of the result from here sorry i think i missed a slide okay this is how it looked like i mean uh, with some of the swing gauges when we load it at a different distance so the string actually perform uh, according to the load that we have applied okay this is the string measurement using a double locomotive with the string gauges at a different position at the different equipment the string so this is during the static load test <coughs> uh, all those string gauges is actually side by side we have it at the same section but left and right so it's quite similar and then this is a uh, string gauges at top of the beam and then bottom of the beam that's why there's one tension there's one compression so we also did some comparison with that uh, 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 distributed uh, fiber optic sensor measurement because for this kind of measurement the most effective way is that if we have a sensor that you can cover the whole bridge with those a point one sensor uh, the cost is actually in fact quite expensive we not able to really put it at every single corner of the bridge uh, that's why we use this BOTDA just for the comparison to look at how how is the measurement compared to the FBG so it look quite nice and then because of that existing condition of that uh, uh, the track we are supposed to test uh, the train at a moving uh, speed up to 90 km per hour but we can see that I mean the existing rail track condition is not that good for the train to move at 90 even at 40 uh, uh, it's, it's not at, at a very good condition really so what we can do is only that we can test up to 40 and then we did some interpolation to look at whether really the speed give any effect I mean to the structure itself so this is some advantages that we can have using this fiber optic sensor but the problem is that we were going to have a lot of data because every second you have 1000 data and you have a lot of sensor so we need to handle all those a lot of uh, 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 data and then uh, but the good point is that you can actually capture the max uh the, the capture the maximum strain when there's a dy dynamic load to the bridge the limitation is that for this particular technology uh it's still not very popular because of the very high cost and you need some technique for the installation as well so the conclusion is that the after the test everyone is happy I mean the modeling and the instrumentation it looks like it doesn't run quite a lot and and the bridge look like even after 100 years it's still in very good condition and those measurement the uh, maximum measuring strain is quite still within the uh, uh, allowable strain and then we are also happy because those are sensors that we have I mean it's quite matching even with different systems so with that i end my presentation and uh, this is the team for the whole of test thank you